Dear children, before we begin this class, let us start with a small prayer. Let us stand up and recite the prayer shown on the screen. We thank you, Lord Almighty, for having brought us together in this catechism class to study and pray and also to know and understand the divine revelations that God has prepared for us. We submit ourselves before the fellowship of the Most Holy Trinity. We pray along with the psalmist, It is you who light my lamp, the Lord my God, light up my darkness. O Jesus, who shines as the everlasting light in our lives, we pray to you to preserve us under your mighty protection in all our deeds of this year. Mother Mary, who strengthened your son during his times of suffering, intercede for us. Dear children, hope you and your family are healthy and safe by the grace of God. The theme of class 10 catechism is church, the missionary community. Do you all know where it is mentioned in the textbook? It's on the cover page of the textbook. We have seen in the first chapter, I hope all of you have seen the first chapter on the YouTube channel. To summarize the first chapter, it spoke about the missionary nature of the church, how word of God was made flesh and how God the Father sent his only son amongst us for our salvation. It all spoke about Jesus who was the first missionary and how Holy Spirit helps us. How Jesus sent the church through his apostles. We now move on to chapter 2 which tells us about evangelization which is a basic duty of the church. Can you guess what evangelization means? I will let you know. It means spreading the gospel. Why do we say it's a basic duty of the church? What does the church do when we go to church? It, during the mass, the word of God is shared with us. The gospel is read and proclaimed. That is why it is said the basic duty of the church is evangelization. The Gospel of Mark chapter 1 verses 14 to 15. It says how after John the Baptist was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. How do we come to know that Jesus revealed this kingdom to the God, of God to the world? 
as you read in the bible it is through his presence the sermons which he gave the parables the healings and the miracles he also entrusted this task of preaching the gospel to his apostles which is still being continued by the church even today you would have read in the bible how initially the church was formed through small communities it was all formed as a result of proclamation of the gospel the apostles received the message of the kingdom of god and the mysteries which was revealed to them by jesus he sent his disciples to the world and also instructed them that they should do it in total trust in god and they have to take a lot of sacrifice while proclaiming the good news in mark chapter 6 verses 8 to 9 you find jesus instructing his apostles his disciples to take nothing with them in their journey except a staff no bread no money no bag and not even two tunics what does this symbolize or what does it mean it ensures and it means how much sacrifice the apostles had to take while going out to preach is it not if you are going on a journey and if you don't carry money if you don't have a bag food to eat clothes to change you can guess what hardships you will be put to he also warned the apostles they are like sheep who are sent into a pack of wolves you can imagine what happens if sheep are sent to a pack of wolves the wolves would have attacked the sheep and killed them the apostles two were put to these types of hardships while preaching the kingdom of god and that it is near so preaching the word of god has to be done with lot of sacrifice this is what jesus has told to his apostles the apostles were a witness to what jesus had carried out during his ministry they were with him they have seen his death and resurrection also it is with the help of the holy spirit on the day of pentecost the apostles regained their courage till that time they were all afraid after the death of jesus they regained the courage to proclaim the gospel publicly we can see in the bible how peter by his proclamation of the word of god could form the first church the community that listened to him repented and believed in jesus it was 3000 people who got baptized by his preaching and the church started growing you can also find how apostles went to different parts of the world and how they preached the word of god 
we are all aware st thomas was the apostle who came to india and you can also now witness how the apostles by the power of the holy spirit were able to preach the word of god to people who did not knew about jesus they also preached in their local language how did this all happen it was with the help of the holy spirit when you preach in the local language people understand they also carried out various miracles and healing in the name of jesus which made thousands to believe in jesus and receive the baptism and this is how church communities were formed in different parts of the world even in india it started in kerala where st thomas first arrived the church which was formed by this proclamation of the apostles acts as an evangelizer and as an agent of evangelization do you know how the church does it it does it in two ways first one it reevangelizes this it does within the church to keep up the spirit power and newness of the church what happens if this is not done we the baptized ones will start to wither away is it not the other act is it evangelizes the non believers by proclaiming the word of god to them and by this they bring them nearer to the god evangelization is the duty the vocation and the mission of the church and without the church evangelization is not possible what do we mean by church it is we all who are baptized in the name of lord so it is a basic duty to evangelize to spread the word of god and what do we mean by kingdom of god Jesus and the apostles have been proclaiming kingdom of God Many people think kingdom of God means having sufficient to eat to drink and live happily without any hardships Does it mean kingdom of God No. It is the righteousness, peace and joy with which we live our life with the help of the Holy Spirit. Which me which means kingdom of God. And how do we get that? It is by believing in the merciful love of god the father who is the creator and by loving everyone as brothers and sisters you would have all read in the bible how jesus had went around 
forgiving the sins healing the sick and announcing the good news of salvation which gave the experience of the kingdom of god so we can summarize that the kingdom of god is fulfilling god's will you can see in many places in the bible jesus was always focusing on fulfilling the will of his father in matthew chapter 6 and 7 jesus gives us the assurance to strive first for the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all things will be given to you he also says those who do the will of the father will enter the kingdom of god how would one proclaim the kingdom of god if i tell you all to go and proclaim the kingdom of god to the people what would be the first thought that would come into your mind you all would be thinking i am a small child how will i be able to preach the word of god to others is it not it is not just by preaching the word of god you can be an evangelist you could be a witness through the christian life you follow you can share your talents your time your knowledge and wisdom for the welfare of others and how do you do this i'm sure many would also be doing this you can do it by helping the needy taking care of the sick teaching other children who are less privileged all these actions of yours will be constituted as you spreading the word of god can be a witness and there are many ways one can be a witness by doing one's duties faithfully and loving one's enemies loving one's enemies is one of the powerful and effective means of evangelism when you are go to school do you all bully your uh, friends there or do you all get bullied my son often says he is bullied by the girls in the school and if i would have had a daughter she would have said the boys are the bullies is it not I'll I'll explain you a small aspect of evangelization how you can practice it Say you had an argument with one of your fellow students in the class 
and you had to raise your voice on it or her. If you apologize to him and ask his pardon from within your deep from your heart and that too in the presence of the all all other students it acts as an effective means of evangelization how does it act as an effective means by asking his pardon in the presence of all the students you set an example among the other children who look upon you as a person who is ready to forgive and you being a follower of Jesus these are the qualities which you have been taught by the word of god by jesus this will attract them to know more about jesus if there are students who don't know about jesus in your class so you get an opportunity to tell to them about jesus and about his preaching about his good deeds about his miracles and healing this is how you become an evangelist you need not go and stand on a road and proclaim by just doing a small act which jesus has told you you become an evangelist we have had many saints who with the selfless work has been an effective evangelist they have shared their faith experience directly with others i am sure you all may know about saint mother teresa how she helped the poor when we all see that it comes to our mind and how she has been following what jesus has taught us and we get influenced by her deeds this is how evangelization takes place by being a witness you would have heard about sister rani maria she was stabbed to death by one saminder singh he was arrested he was put behind bars at a later day sister rani maria's family members visited saminder singh in the prison and pardoned him for what he had done looking at what they have done to him he got evangelized and after getting released from the jail he has accepted the word of god so this is what is called as being a witness can you all imagine what would have happened if the apostles would have not taken up on this mission they would have not taken up this mission of christ of spreading the word of god 
and they would have not traveled to the world different parts of the world would we have known about jesus would we have known about the kingdom of god no and as a christian it is our duty and our mission to spread the word we as a member of the church it should be our aim and goal to spread the word to all who do not know about jesus his teachings and by doing that we all will be partaking in the mission of Jesus which he entrusted us through his apostles i will narrate you a small story a small incident there was an intelligent boy named jude He was well behaved well mannered all the teachers in the school loved him he also used to study well and get good marks and one of was the topper in the class one day a theft had happened in the class one of the student had brought a very good pen an imported one and it went missing some children blame jude and they blamed he was one of the student who has taken this pen since three or four children said this the class teacher took it to be true and punished him he was sent home the principal put up a team to investigate this and the team came up with the findings they were able to find the pen and who had carried out this act it was not jude so the principal called jude to his cabin and asked him if you were aware and you knew you have not taken it why didn't you tell it to us when we had asked Jude replied I go daily to the church and attend the holy mass Also we read the bible in the house I have read in the bible Jesus suffered for no fault of his they asked him several times pilate asked him but he didn't utter a word similarly 
even I followed him what he has said they were all amazed they were non believers also in the school stuff they all got the message what jesus had preached during his ministry and jude has conveyed this or was able to evangelize them they all came to know about jesus through jude there are certain activities in this chapter one is find out the biblical passage that illustrate the zeal of jesus to fulfill the will of the father and write them down the second one discuss the occasions that you get to bear witness to the kingdom of god and prepare a chart these you can complete and give it to your respective class teachers i hope after you have heard this lesson you would all make a decision in your mind to spread the message of the gospel the word of god in the school or wherever you stay thank you and wish you all to be an effective evangelist let us in the class by thanking god for giving us this wonderful opportunity let us stand and recite the prayer shown on the screen o merciful lord we thank you for having sent forth upon us your wisdom from the holy heavens from the throne of your glory thank you for having chosen us to be the shining lamps of the world by illuminating darkness and spreading light o oh jesus you said it is not the will of my heavenly father that one of these little ones should be lost we thankfully join our hands before you for holding all of us to your bosom following the example of mother mary who readily accepted to be the handmaid of the lord we too pray that we may be strengthened to do god's will in every walk of our life amen